Bring it on, bring it on. You, 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 bring it you. on. There are many excellent works, and can we bring them to the fore? So that there are examples and stories that we can use to inspire young people. That project, uh, we went around the entire country uh, in specific hubs in Lagos, Abuja, and Port Harcourt. Recruited about 3,000 entrepreneurs, which we then whittled down to a final 30 uh, at a pitch competition at Asu Villa. That final 30 went on to receive more than $3 million in grants from the World Bank. Wonderful initiative by the federal government of Nigeria. Please let's give them a round of applause. Some of the ideas that came out of that project were invested in by a lot of uh, you know, investors that were in attendance. If you are aware of the project, you will remember that Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO and one of the founders of uh, the social network Facebook, was in attendance at that event. And his company, through you know, one of the investment arms, made a $50,000 donation to one of the startups that was uh, in attendance. I just wanted to share with you very briefly two or three of those ideas that we found. One of them is called Tuteria. It's simply a matching platform if you are looking to learn Igbo, right? And that's what one of our judges was suggesting earlier. If you're looking to learn Igbo, you can connect with a tutor on that platform. If you're learning, looking to learn physics, whatever it is. Brilliant, brilliant business idea. Um, our vice president was personally there and you know, met the, the, the young man, shook his hand, he also went to Unilag as well, right? Okay, yeah. um, in incredible, incredible guy, and he's moved in leaps and bounds since then. I personally follow up with a lot of these guys, and they're doing, doing incredible work. One of them, uh, another one, is in the uh, healthcare space, doing uh, medical records. Their name is now Helium Health, and they were accepted into the Y Combinator class I think of last uh, winter or so. Um, and then the third one is in, you know, in, in the environment space, doing recycle, mm -hmm. recycling, right? And taking up waste and trying to upcycle it. Um, they have a network of waste collection points across uh, various cities. So the point is, guys, none of your ideas is stupid, right? Keep going at it. And we've heard a lot of brilliant pitches today. Uh, and you know, I think it will, it will, it will end, up, end up really well if you, if you stay the course. Now, the same presidency said, you know what, we've done this for young people in the country. How can we do this for students? And that's where the student innovation challenge came from. And even I personally have been very impressed at the way it's, it's run. Uh, four geographical regions in Nigeria um, and we are currently at the Southwest, and we're trying to find what are the best ideas that we can surface and support. And like you know, the winner here wins uh, one million naira. What you can be certain about is that when the presidency supports something, everybody else joins along, right? So we really do need to appreciate the federal government of Nigeria again for the support of the I think leadership is, is about what you do, very simply. It's not about what you say, it's really what you do. And every 30 minutes or one hour that is spent supporting a specific project definitely goes an incredible way. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I want to say that I'm thankful for that and uh, very proud of, you know, because a lot of us who support young people and their work really value this type of support. Um, I'm expecting to have uh, Okwe Awiyemi from Jogoman tell us a very quick uh, story of his journey from college to building uh, Jogoman. So if we'll have him uh, come up here. Uh, so that we can hear from him.
Is that giving me a round of applause again? Good afternoon. Um, His Excellency, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, um, the Vice Chancellor of the University of Lagos, and um, other dignitaries present here. Um, good afternoon, everyone. So, I'm Okoyemi Awoyemi, one of the founders of Jokman. Um, I, I know Jokman needs an introduction. Pretty much everyone knows Jokman. But we're here to talk about students. Students, what do they know? What good can come out of students? You know, that's what you're going to hear pretty much from most of the people you ask when you talk about students. But the reality is that a lot of good can come out of students. Students have been at the forefront of innovation in different industries, in politics, in entertainment, in entrepreneurship, in technology. And the reason why this happens, it's not because students have experience or a lot of knowledge. It's the fact that students are better positioned because of the fact that they have unadulterated faith and belief that anything is possible. Students are sometimes naive, but that naivety makes them very ambitious and they know that some things are going to be hard on the long run. I tell you today as young people, don't let anybody tell you that you can do things different. When we started, people told us we couldn't make it happen. Nobody believed that it was possible for people to rely on the website for their job search more than they rely on a newspaper. This was in 2009 when myself, Olani Konbulude and Keji um, Adewumi started Jobberman right from Obafemi Olo University. Good evening. Great. Okay. And um, when we started there, it was pretty much just born out of a simple idea that other people needed jobs, and for those who don't need jobs, they know someone we need a job. And we believe this could impact not just on our community, but on millions of people. And we just set out. Never did we know that we would, a simple idea would become one thing that would be synonymous with jobs in Nigeria. More importantly, the platform has gone ahead to pretty much facilitate job placements for more than 6,000 people monthly. And the platform is also a very influential platform in Nigeria today because it has data of more than 2 million young Nigerians. That's huge. But did we know that this was going to work this way? Did we understand everything? Did we have everything covered when we started? The reality is we did not. We asked questions. We used the internet. We consulted people who are more experienced locally in Nigeria and also abroad and took their knowledge, our own ambition, our own belief, put everything together and just started. And we worked hard at what we wanted to do. We also went on ahead to raise millions of dollars in venture capital. And I can tell you today that German is a profitable social enterprise. Now, to capital. As you demo today, some of you have demoed, wonderful ideas have been shared today. A lot of you will not get the money, understandably, <laughs> right? There's a prize winner. But what you should know is the fact that the ideas, the little ideas you're working on today, keep working on it. Launch fast. Get feedback fast. You might fail at it, but you can improve and improve. And at the end of the day, what you bring out of that will be super and you'll be amazed at what you're creating. There are funds, there are opportunities waiting for the, for the uh, startups that emerge from this process and uh, get a little bit bigger or get traction. And if you do the right things, you will definitely get more opportunities to grow and scale what you started. Right? Don't give up on that. That's very important. And I also want to add this as the last one. As you build, don't just think about Nigeria. Think about the world. The world is your marketplace. 
Don't let anybody tell you you can't. We are at the point where we need our software to be exported so that we can actually get more foreign funds coming in. Don't let anybody tell you you can't market to the world. Nigeria is waiting for you, and the world is also waiting for you. Thank you very much. And the remarks of uh, one of our sponsors, um, Mr. Herbert Wigwe from Access Bank. Please just give him a round of applause. Great Akoka. Greatest of the greatest of the greatest of the greatest Akoka. The Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshibajo. Of course, the Vice Chancellor of the University of Lagos, members of the Senate, our most impressive community, the greatest Akokites, and of course, very, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It's my honor and privilege to be with you at this inaugural uh, innovation challenge happening out here today. Let me just tell you something. Nothing, nothing ever gives me more joy than to be with young people, especially Nigerian youth. For those of you who know us in Access, you will know that we spend more than enough time with young people. And the reason is that you have very, very, very strong, curious, and adventurous minds. Minds that can change fundamentally how things work in an organization, or in fact, even how a country runs. But today, I'm going to give you one or two pieces of advice that may help you on your journey to achieve your dreams. You know, it was the Pulitzer Prize winner, Tom Friedman, who said that if you just step back maybe 10, 15 years ago, Facebook barely existed. Twitter was just noise made by birds. <laughs> People saw Skype and thought, no, no, this must be a typo. When they talk about cloud, and it also happens to be today in the bank, the cloud was just something in the sky. I mean, how can you tell me something is hosted in the cloud? What, what does that mean? You know, big data, you know, was the name of the rap star and all of that. For those who are old enough to, to understand what rap was all about, those are the type of names that rap star and Disney um, answers. When you start talking about application, it was basically a letter written seeking for employment. <laughs> that was what an application meant. But you know, today, all of these things have changed. All of these terms mean totally different things altogether. They've brought great wealth to institutions and to the individuals who have visited each and every one of them. But guess what? So also have they made several things become obsolete. I'll just step back a little bit for those of you who remember. There used to be something that we used to play called the cartridge. For the Akokai who are presently in school, you wouldn't know it, but your parents used it. So you use cartridge, then you advance to record player. The concept of CDs was just a very, very recent event. I told my colleagues that I was inspired to buy CDs for some music and all of that. They told me, what century do you belong to? Eh, haven't you heard of, uh, uh, is it uh, not Spotify? Or then you can buy all these things offline. But what does that mean? All of those people who produced all of those things in the past, record labels and all of those things, they just don't exist because the world is moving and curious minds are creating more interesting and innovative things. So whether you like to believe it or not, innovation is here to stay. And the only thing that is certain is that change. And so young minds will continue to grow and more curious than ever before. About 15, 18 years ago, to make a phone call, you had to go and stand in front of nine cells. Today, I'm not sure how many landlines even truly exist. But that's, that's just how the world is changing. Tomorrow, maybe you won't even need cards to make any payments again, even your phone. So the world is continuously changing. And so I'm extremely grateful today to the federal government of Nigeria, of course, most especially for this innovation. Because it offers a platform for you to create and develop innovative ideas that will enhance the quality of human existence. And as Mr. Drucker once said, the best way to predict the future is to create it. And that is what we should all strive to achieve. At Access Bank, we've always had a very
very strong buyer for innovation. And because we believe that in the future of our customers. And when you see us recruiting more and more young people in this field, for those of for their pockets who are here, you will see all the great things we are doing in the hub we have here. It's because we know that innovation is critical to the future of our business and it is one of our core values. And I'll take a few moments to share with you a couple of things. In 2017, we set up a FinTech accelerator out in Lagos, which is developing a massive cocktail of know-how, capital, and data into the heart of our FinTech ecosystem. We started in March 2017 by unleashing a talent of about 70 hand-picked programmers, young people like you, and we exposed you to our API and all of that. You cannot begin to imagine what we all came out with. Such great ideas ranging from artificial intelligence to speech synthesis, natural language processing, sometimes now you call um, our, our call center. It's not a real person. It's, 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 out, it's come out of, it's our own bot that, has, that can now interact with you and do anything you want to do. But it was invented by young people like you who are sitting here today. So it's a game changing experience for all of us. And we've moved on to create African FinTech Foundry, which both of you must have participated in, all right, or have come there. Um, which basically exposes young people to a great platform to very, very interesting things. Let me tell you something. Let nobody talk to you and talk to you about that you are leaders of tomorrow. You are leaders of today. You are creating the future of our great country just for the things you do and just by applying yourself in the way in which you are already doing it. We remodeled our branches out here in Unilag and across, across the entire uh, um, university in, in Nigeria. And of course, turn them into social engagement hubs where students can go and do anything, reach out to counselors, etc., etc., etc. All of those things are to help ensure the development of our country. And so, we believe that innovation is the most important thing that we can do for ourselves and make our country so much more competitive. We have a youth banking team, which is basically created to serve all of you young people. Because we believe that the youth of our nation have the capacity to develop all innovative solutions. Several people, some of them have graduated out of uni like here. There's a gentleman called Fahid Adekwaji, all right, who, invited, who invented in year one and two the tablet computer. Shei Oyeshola, who co invented Compact All. And we can go on and on and on. Ndubisi Ekekwe, all right, who developed some microchips that are used in surgical robots. And if you want to know about surgical robots, in one second I'll tell you what I saw just last weekend. Now, there are several operations that used to be conducted on people. For most men, African males, what you will find is that you will normally have enlarged prostate or things like that as you get older. And it used to be such a bloody operation. I saw it, I was not told how people were saved in five minutes just through surgical robots. Something that was deadly is now almost something of the past, developed by young people like you. You say quick, more. But anybody who tells you that they things come easy is also lying to you. All right, let's get to it. Bring it on. Are you ready? Are you ready? No matter. So we are the Zero One team from the Federal University of Technology, Apure, and. We are the Tesla of the cooking industry. We realized a very big market that exists in the cooking industry because about over 20 million Nigerian families presently still cook with um, firewood and with charcoal. And it was recorded by WHO that about 1 million people still die from the use of this method. And even worse is more, many people face health challenges by the use of this um, method. Okay, this is what we found. We realized that organic waste of about just 5% is being appropriately managed in Nigeria. And even worse still, 95% are left unmanaged and then they decompose and give rise to methane, which contributes to about 25% of the gases that cause global warming. This is the solution we provide. We feel if there is a resource that exists in the waste, then we should use it to solve the problem that you need. And Bryce will tell you more. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, with our zero waste value chain, we can collect waste from our farms, from our ranches, and produce biogas. Now, once we produce biogas, the byproducts from this process can also be used to produce briquettes. Now, biogas and briquettes provide us with the following options. They produce lower emissions, they are safer, they are healthier, and they also produce more energy. Now, to market these products, we've set up the zero waste green team. What's 
we do is essentially go to rural communities and educate them about the health hazards that is involved in cooking with firewood and charcoal and also market our alternative briquettes to them. Now, with this, to, to make money, generally, we produce um, about 1.6 tons of biogas every month to sell, then about 6 tons of briquettes to sell to these communities. Uh, to meet up with our growing demand of food waste, uh, to meet up with our growing demand of organic waste, we are looking to adopt the smart bean technology, which should be distributed for free to residents of various communities. So they will not need to pay for their waste to be removed. Instead, the smart bean would tell us once their food waste is um, full in their bin, so we just come collect it and even reward them for it. Then to penetrate the market better, we are going to we have a reward strategy for the rural communities that once they use our briquettes, if they can provide us with the ashes, which can which is an essential element for organic fertilizers, we would also pay them in return. That would help them consider our options better. Thank you so much. Our long term goals is that we plan to remove one hundred ninety eight thousand. Okay. So this is waste to wealth, yes. and that's where the world is leading to. Yes, sir. Now, how do you think that you can make a business that will be sustainable from this? What do you think your bottom line is, and how much do you think um, you can invest in this to have a sustainable business? Okay, we've developed a plan that runs on a, the plan needs 26 million era to come to life, but we have the plan to use this one million to set up so that we can approach investors to give us the funding that we need to start up. Now, what we do with the waste is actually when we convert it to briquettes, we put them into the market and ensure that they replace the conventional cooking fuels, which are LNG and uh, charcoal. Charcoal and firewood basically because they have help, uh, they affect, they cause deforestation and other things when trying to acquire them. And we also introduce cheaper cooking fuels like biogas that is cheaper than the LNG that we use by some percentage. Can you dig into that a little bit more? What is the cost of making either the briquettes or the cooking gas? And what is, what is the cost of the alternative in the market? What is the price of the alternative in the market? Um, after considering all our cost price, we would be able to sell one kg of briquettes, which burns much better than charcoal for just 200 and 219 naira. And that is one kg. And compared to charcoal, it is about 30% cheaper. Then for biogas, we it's so close, but it's just about 15 percent cheaper because we're able to sell for about 270 naira per kg. Yeah. Okay, um, only one winner will emerge from today's session. I was just wondering why your idea stands out. I mean, why should you be the the eventual winner of this competition? We have a safe environment as well as providing a future for our nation. So, if we are given this chance, we intend to commit to a road plan to save the ecosystem eventually and also provide opportunity for people to be able to handle their cooking problems at a very reduced cost and without having a negative effect on their health. can make for a wealthy nation. But then what can we do when the people of the nation cannot afford quality healthcare services? What then can we do when the people of when quality healthcare services is very far away from people? Or what can we do when people who can access and afford quality healthcare services but literally have to stand all through the day in the hospital just to receive medical attention? Or what can we do after getting your prescription? You have to visit about five pharmacies just to purchase two drugs. Why? Because a single pharmacy does not contain all the drugs you want to get. So ladies and gentlemen, attentive audience, I present to you Quick Health. Quick Health is an online platform where you can easily get your quality healthcare services. What do we do? Quick Health contains Quick Med, Quick Farm, Quick Lab, and Quick Fit. 
It's an online platform. We have a website. We have the mobile app, and then you can reach us through phone call and SMS. That is the offline mode. So basically, we are partnering with telecommunications like M10 Foundation and some other organizations to make this a reality. We have quite a number of um, competitors, but we are unique in the sense that we deliver timely, in no time, we deliver very quickly compared to others. And then we focus on not just urban areas, not just urban areas, but we focus on even the semi-urban areas, even the rural areas, through the use of phone call, SMS, mobile app, and some other mediums. Also, we are much more affordable. It's not as expensive compared to some some other competitors. Um, thank you, sir. So what do you think will be the cost of um, setting up this online platform? Okay, according to the calculation I have here, 935,000 Naira is all you need to. Is all I need to. Go yes, ma'am. Uh, how do you plan to manage? How do you plan to manage for logistics, right? So you initiate, the customer initiates a transaction, they purchase an item, and you need to get it to them. Do you plan to buy your bikes, or how are you going to get the goods from the store to the customer? Okay, fine. Currently, we have, currently there are organizations that deal with delivery. So what we just have to do is we have to bring, um, we have to network with other healthcare services. Let me use Quick Farm, for example. What we do generally is just to network with community pharmacies in a particular region. If you are in Akoka, for example, we have a network with the community pharmacies such that when you say you need this particular drug, we can easily get it for you from the pharmacy and get it delivered to you in no time, very quickly. So that is it. And then it's not just myself doing it. We have people involved in delivery, people involved in getting the um, reply from the website and all. So it's not just... So I want to clarify. So you have a buying service that is on top of the technology. So yes. the order comes in and someone walks into a local pharmacy, picks up the drugs. Gets it. Okay. Right. Yes, sir. Okay, well, I'm just wondering, uh, you were providing a good service for people in the urban areas. So what happens to the people in rural areas? How would they benefit from this quick help? Okay, fine. Thank you, sir. People in the rural areas, we believe that they don't use smartphones. That is the general belief. So with phone calls, that is why I said we're partnering with telecommunications. So with just, hello, please, I need this drug, and you can get it delivered to you. And we have, um, someone presented on Afarjet, that's the use of drone. We've actually thought of that too. Use, the use of drone in delivering medicines. <laughs> the use of drones in delivering medicines to the rural areas. Yes, so my question really is, uh, it's a great idea. Thank you, sir. My question is, what is your sustainability plan here? What makes you unique? Okay. Basically, what prevents other from playing in this space and crowding you out? What makes you unique and what makes you stand out for sustainability? Okay, thank you, sir. Well, the first thing is timely delivery. Well, that is the truth. You and I need healthcare. And it depends on how well we present ourselves to you. That is what will make you think we are good. And also, apart from the quick delivery, there is one particular thing. Okay, so let me just guide you on that. Okay, so what, what I'm talking about really is the uniqueness in terms of either your ability to grow the customers through policy, through licensing. You need to look at that so that it's much easier, or rather it's much difficult to get competitors in. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. My name is Isabella Olawale from Adekunle Ajasi University. Here is a win-win idea. We target Agrotech. Agrotech is an internet-based marketplace where farmers interact with buyers across Nigeria. Actually, we are solving a regional problem in our state, which is Akoko region. There are over 280,000 farmers in Akoku. Just over 70 markets are provided. Only 17 are make use of. This is a major problem. Every youth 
of this state is on the streets roaming about because they are not encouraged to go into agriculture. A lot of farmers in Akoko region today are not ready to expand their business because what I have, my neighbor already has it. Why should I produce more of it? There is no way to market this. Stop it, come off it. This is agrotech. We are introducing this to you today. This is a place where you can easily come onto our website. This is what I have. And immediately we notify a buyer in Ondo State, very close to your environment. Why is it that we have only Babafala here enjoying the market? No, you can come up again. This is a very unique business. We are doing things differently. Even though we have people doing it already, this is unique. Very, very genuine. Thanks. us first. We have 23 stand of cassava to sell and immediately we notify you. We notify a buyer who needs that particular product. Immediately we get a, 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 a kind of um, information from that buyer. We notify immediately, oh, Mr. Ademola from this so-so-so company is going to get your product at this so-so-so date. So if you can invest on behalf of the person, you get a commission for that. I believe every country, every company in Nigeria today has a means of getting ease or our own material, material. So you don't need to go through any space. Just notify the company. The company will come and invest whatever they have to invest. And if they need you to invest for you, they will, they will still pay you commission for doing that. I think you need to connect with them. Um, you can help in assisting connecting farmers to growers. Yeah? Thank you. Yeah, from Ajay Crowder University. I'm here to present on my project idea called Ecozyme. Ecozyme is a startup company that produces cost effective multi purpose cleansers from kitchen waste, that is, vegetable, or fruits, and food waste products. Now, according to Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, they said that 80% of fruits and foods produced in Nigeria and vegetables produced are actually actually get spoiled as a result of uh, insufficient power supply and also 52 percent of waste products actually deposited at landfill um, sites are organic waste which are the most toxic and dangerous you know why because when rain falls the water flushes what is referred to as liquid latchet into rivers and all and the accumulation of um, um, solid organic waste and also the constant usage of chemically induced chem uh, domestic or industrial products has led to deteriorating health conditions as well as um, environmental pollution also. And that's the reason why I was able to convert fruit waste into multipurpose cleansers. Now, a bottle of Ecozyme has the ability of serving as a pesticide, herbicide, disinfectant, a liquid fertilizer. It can also be used as a coat, a fabric, or dishwasher also. Now, each has different functions. Now, for, and this covers a variety of needs. For example, we can cover the domestic, agricultural, and industrial need. For the domestic needs, you could use this as a dishwasher. You could use this as your fabric washer. You could use it to wash your cars. Antiseptic disinfectants. We have the insect repellent here. We also have ear fresheners which also serve as ear purifiers because this has been tested by the Department of Biological Sciences at Jai Crowder University and it's used as a disinfectant in the microbiology laboratory. Also the liquid fertilizers are usually used in Ajay Crowder University in the greenhouse. We also have um, animal enhancers or supplements which are these waste products that have been converted into this product induced with certain minerals and vitamins also to help them. And if you look at my slide, please, there is a... Um... Okay, question, all right, no See all these elaborate plans? Yes, if you got the one million, or if you won, you know, the competition, what exactly would you do? Would I you want know? to produce them in large quantities. Personally, myself, I've been able to produce just um, about 100 of it, of which I already sold out uh, about two weeks or a week after it was featured on um, Punch Online and Naira Land, two weeks after I got orders and I sold everything out. So with one million at least, I'll be able to produce 600 to 1,000 of these products. Yeah, how safe are they? They are 100% safe. 
they are eco-friendly products. They've been tested, microbial analysis, chemical analysis, everything has been tested and it's been proven to be effective. So. What will be your competitive advantage? Okay, there's so many. Yeah. Yes, exactly. We have products. We have products, not like this in the market, okay, in the Nigerian market. We have a lot of products that claim to be eco-friendly, eco-products, but are actually not eco-products because they have in, indirectly some forms of chemicals in it. And what makes this stand out from every other product in the market, please can you leave it on this slide here. What makes this stand out from every other product in this market is because this will be cost effective, this will be environmental friendly. I'm not only helping you, I'm also helping the environment because I'm trying to clean the environment and in that process I'm developing products that will also benefit you. So most of the products, now you can look at this ma, I actually compared this product to seven um, home um, normal cleansers in the country, that is the dishwashers we use and you can see this has been proven more effective than any other dishwasher you ever come across in the federation. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry. I must say this, uh, you know, I love your confidence. And Thank you very much. Up, keep it up. Thank you. Sir. Quick one though, how do you plan to market this? Because you produce 600, how are you going to market it? Okay, uh, the social media. The social media is actually very powerful too because it's a startup company. I cannot say I'm going to electric, electronic billboards and all. The social media was what actually made me gain over a thousand orders in less than two weeks. We are going to bombard the market with social media. Every blog, every site you go to, you are going to see this. We are going to make the world know that this is the future. We are talking about the future. We are talking about something that will change our lives, something that will contribute to the positiveness of the environment and our health. Thank you very much. Um, my project is agricultural leasing. I found out in Oyo State, the problem is not we don't have um, agricultural lands. We actually have agricultural lands, but we don't have the, the youth. They have the zeal, but they don't have the machines to push those agricultural products. So here's what I'm going to do. With this money given to me, I am going to buy machines and lease out to the farmers. Why? Because they need these machines to boost agricultural products in Oyo State. Secondly, I'll build a blockchain technology for them to increase agricultural products in other states. Simple. Thank you very much. To remove, they need these machines to remove all these plantations and start making improvements. With this, Nigeria can be able to boost their agricultural produce in Africa. Thank you. I am thinking of starting first with seeds. Getting seeds, distributing them, cocoa seeds. We have fertile lands in Oyo, we have fertile lands in Ondo. We can distribute these seeds, get this plantation from there, get a little money from there, and then boost this business. This business starts off from there. So, I want to clarify are you mixing equipment or are you selling in builds? Are you providing services? What exactly is the basket of things that you offer? The basket of it, I'm listing out, I'm listing out machines, equipment, irrigation system, technologies. But that's the beginning, but I don't have enough money. The money is like 10 million, but it's just 1 million. I need to start from somewhere. All right. All right. All right. All right. Good afternoon, the Vice Chancellor, distinguished judges, all other protocols really observed. My name is Ukele Chupu Diki. I'm a student of the Federal University of Technology at Green. I'm here to present my idea on the project Le de Frances. I believe that every great idea in life has a story behind it, and this is the story behind this idea. In 2013, when I finished high school, I was teaching French in some schools in my area. Then when I again admission to the French University of Technology at Korea, I realized that there were no French courses. And that made me start losing interest in French. And I also realized that in other Federal University of Technology, there are no French courses too. So I started, I created a WhatsApp group where me and some other people that are interested in French can network and share ideas of French language learning. Because I believe that French language is something that can give you an opportunity and it can upscale you in the current labor market. Just three months ago, African leaders came together and signed the Continental Free Trade Area Initiative. We are talking about economic integration in Africa and I believe that French language learning is one of the things that are going to boost this regional integration. So, how am I going to do this? I'm going to do this by offering two unique um, products. The first one is the FrenchHub.com and the second one is the French Trivia Apps. 
The FrenchHub.com is going to be a website platform where anyone that is interested in learning French language will come and gain access to language learning materials. You can also book your French language tutors on the website. And you, we are also going to have a forum where people will share ideas and any question you have on French language, you can always improve your French language learning. And the trivia app is going to be and a language learning app that is going to have different sections like quizzes from the, the past French examination, like the deaf and deaf examinations, the junior work and the senior work past question. Students can always use the app to prepare for these examinations. So these are these are the two products I'm offering. And um, how do I want to go about marketing these products? We want to first start first by using social media platform like Facebook, Facebook advertisement to market this product. And we also want to use students and ambassadors in various tertiary institutions who will tell their families and friends about the product. And then lastly, we want to engage in impact projects in high schools where we will reward high performing French students in schools and encourage them to them do more about French language as it can help them in any way of their career, not minding whether they are engineers, scientists or so, because there is this general belief that engineers don't need it, but I'm contrary to that belief, everybody needs it and is actually going to work, link us with our Franco Francophone neighbors in Africa. Thank you very much. internet today that people can access to learn languages and all. How will your initiative be different and um, what competitive advantage do you bring into bear? Okay, um, thank you, Mark. Talking about the language, me, I'm a French language learner. I have a lot of French language apps that I've downloaded. So, but the issue is that my own app is the kind of, is different from the ones that are actually on the internet. So I have a, a, a French pronunciation, French pronunciation section where you the way I design the app is in a demo form where somebody can always master the person, you master your pronunciation in the language and also have the object recognition section like it pops up an object and requires the user to type in the name in French. If you get it right, you go into the next section. If you don't get it right, you claim you back to it. Yeah, so, it ah, yes, yes. Sustain this business if you started in the first year. Okay, so um, the way I want to sustain it, the, the, the way I will generate money, right? Or, um, we want to generate money by um, sustainability. We want to do this by putting um, traditional mobile app um, advertisements in our app. And we also want to like generate money by uh, requesting users to permanently disable this app for just uh, as little as $1.5 dollars. And they can also use that to also unlock further features. Like you start from grade one, when you find the thing interesting, you can use zero point five dollars to unlock and then go to upper grades. And through web advertisements on our platform, we also generate income. I'm just, I'm just thinking, right? So to the point raised by my colleague here, the, the market is saturated. Google is way advanced. However, I'm wondering, what about looking at our own local languages, Pidgin, and building something around that that you offer to people coming into our country? You know, and then it's a local market and you can win easily. I think the French is a struggle. We we'll go the river, pigeon, you know, our local slangs. I think that's that's the way to go. Um, the, 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 the former judge also told me something about that, but I told him that we want to start with this French first, then from there we also go into other local languages and pigeons. <laughs> uh, guys, a, a round of applause. Okay, um, I'm going to give the judges exactly 30 seconds to decide their favorite pitch of the last six that they just heard, okay? And we're going to have a small gift for them, all right? And we have been hearing the moments that, oh, there's no unilag, oh, there's no this, oh, there's no that. Okay, I, I want to take a, time, a, a minute to explain what a randomized process is. It is that we pick a bunch of random, do you understand? According to the instructions. Okay, okay. Okay, I've heard you, I heard, I heard. All right, I've heard, I've heard. All right. So, what will happen next? Guys, guys, what will happen next is this. Remember we said we need to be respectful, right? All right, so let's try to be respectful. What will happen next? Remember, this is the judges' sheets in the uh, analysis in the first uh, round. That's what will determine the winner of the entire pitch session. Uh, so what we are going to do now 
is the judges will just pick the judge's choice. He's going to give them a small prize, all right? But uh, do you have it now? Okay. So uh, to present that award, we'll invite uh, the uh, to the stage uh, Mr. Kaidi Piton of the Bank of Industry. Bank of Industry has been a major uh, sponsor of this entire program. So please just give them a round of applause again. Um, and what he will do is just present the prize to uh, the judge's uh, choice, all right? Remember, the judge's choice is not the winner of this uh, competition. The competition's winner will be determined and communicated uh, based on the, the judge's results, all right? Thank you very much, sir. So, you. Uh, announce the winner and then explain why, all right? We'll give them exactly 35 seconds. All right. Okay. Um, can I, can I this? okay. So first, I think everybody's a winner. And just using the Aso Villa demo day, there were many participants and most that didn't actually were top actually did so well today. So do not take this as a defeat in any way. So the winner is the person that we think has got all the you know attributes of a great entrepreneur and it's in the person of Echo Zara. <laughs> and um, it's, it's, it's based on the social impact, his confidence and the, 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 the strategy that he has for scaling and the practicality of it. Well done, well done. I think the time is already fast spent. People are hungry. Some of you are angry. So I would say we want to thank the organizers uh, for doing us proud. Uh, some of us who are older, you know, we're not only happy to be here, but we are impressed with what the young people are doing. Uh, keep it up. I think the future of our country is bright. Thank you for the opportunity. God bless you. By the University of Lagos, and we want to do a very big shout out to the Vice Chancellor who has been very, very instrumental in pushing us. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, so now, we will have everyone who pitched today, all right, just very quietly, you will file and stand beside, uh, behind uh, our, uh, His Excellency the Vice President while he's uh, delivering his remarks to us, okay? Cockites! Yeah. Great, great, great are Cockites! Yeah. Greatest of the greatest of the greatest Nigerian students! Yeah. Please sit, please sit down, please sit down. I'm going to speak for only one minute. First of all, let me say, let me say that I'm glad to be back home. For those of you who know, for those of you who know, I was here as a student and as a lecturer before I was elected as vice president. So Unilag is home for me, and I'm really excited uh, to be back here. But I'm also excited to see what is going on here. This Students' Innovation Challenge, the Southwest Regional Event. The best examples of su successful technology companies started in universities. All the best examples we know, whether it was Steve Jobs' Apple or Mark Zuckerberg, who came out of Harvard, or Bill Gates, who dropped out of Harvard. Here in Nigeria, Jobberman, we've heard of Jobberman, or Koyemi just told us about Jobberman. 
out of uh, um, Femi Aolo University, Naira Land also, out of the university. And I know of the incredible ideas that are going to come out of the University of Lagos. One of the reasons, one of the reasons why I'm so sure that's going to be the case, just before we came here, we went to, to commission the, the hub, our new hub, our technology hub, which will be here uh, in the University of Lagos. It's going to be built using containers, and it's going to take exactly three months to build. So we've been, we, we were here earlier in the day just to take a look at it and to see what's going on there. And I'm sure that's going to be a place of great creativity. And hopefully, we are going to be able to do this in the six geopolitical zones, starting here at the University of Lagos. So, so everybody, knows, everybody knows where the smart money is looking. We all know that the university is the best place for getting the very best talents. And that's what's going to shape the future of our country. Every one of us is aware of that. And so what we did, uh, the federal government did, is that we simply partnered with the UNDP, with the BOI, Bank of Industry, with the MTN, the Civic Foundation for Innovation, and Access Bank, to come and do what we describe as a student's challenge. A student's challenge is to find the best of the students, the best innovation, the best technology ideas, the best creativity, the best creative ideas, from students across Nigeria. Now, we are going to pick 37, but I've spoken to my partners, and they say, because of what they've seen today, we've got to move that up. So we're going to pick 50, not 30. So we're adding an additional 13. So there are some here today, there are some here today who might get, even if you don't get into the first pack, you'll be able to get into that additional one. So we are definitely going to do it in such a way that as many of the great ideas as possible get a chance to be tested commercially, get a chance to be supported. And that's why, you know, just listening to the six that were randomly picked, and they are not necessarily the best that have been heard today, they were just randomly picked. I thought those ideas were just fantastic. I thought the ideas were great. And I know that there are so many other people with great ideas all over here. That's why I've decided that I'm going to take photographs of these 40 who are behind me here. And the simple reason is that I know these guys are going to be famous and they're going to be rich one day. And I don't want them to, and I don't want them to forget me. So that's the reason why I'm going to take this photograph of them. But to everyone else, let me just say that it is absolutely exciting times to be alive. This is the best time. You know, people talk about the good old days. They keep saying, you know, the good old days, the good old days. It was Obama who said, always be suspicious of people who are telling you about these good old days. The best days are here. The future is right here. And I'm, I'm welcome to that future. Thank you very much. So bring your own crayfish, oh, with the mix, oh, oh, la. We know go blow. Oh, share them to see us now. We don't dig low. Take a look at me now. Take a look at me now. We're running things in this town. Can't you see? I don't care who you are, where you're from, or what you do. Just as long as you're chasing money, do what's right, never give up on it. Bring it on. Are you ready? Are you ready? No matter how you try, don't you ever fall. Keep your head up high and standing tall. Bring it on, bring it on. Are you ready? Are you ready? No matter how you try, don't you ever fall. Keep your head up high and standing tall. And rising, rising, rising. Keep it high, rising, rising. Bring it on. This life is not easy. So much hustling and puzzling. Everyone is struggling. So make you know they believe it. Eh? Since everyone is chasing, you're never gonna make it. Never say no. Never give up. Keep your head up. Standing tall. And for sure, you go turn it up. Turn it up. Turn down for what? Shana them toxic. We know.
no go blow. Oh, Share them to see us now. We don't dig low. Take a look at me now. Take a look at me now. We're running things in this town. Can't you see? I don't care who you are, where you're from, or what you do. Just as long as you're chasing money, do what's right, never give up on it. Bring it on, bring it on. Are you ready? Uno ready? No matter how you try, don't you ever fall. Keep your head up high and standing tall. Bring it on, bring it on. Are you ready? Uno ready? No matter how you try, don't you ever fall. Keep your head up high and standing tall and rising. Rising, rising, keep it high, rising, rising.